Okay, so we're gonna look at a few examples where we compute these higher order derivatives. Um, one thing we should also mention is that um, past the third derivative, you kind of stop drawing the primes or things get really kind of ugly and cluttered. Um, and so you tend to write things like this. So F with a, with a number in parentheses, which indicates how many derivatives you should take. All right, so if we're taking K derivatives, we can write it in either of these two ways. So for example, the fourth derivative, we can write like this. Okay, so for our first function, we'll calculate the first derivative. So it's gonna be four, right? So four times the derivative of x squared, so four times two x. So we get eight x. So the second derivative, is going to be the derivative of 8x, and that's 8 times the derivative of x, so 8 times 1, so simply 1. The third derivative well, it's the derivative of 8, right? It's the derivative of a constant, so it's 0. And in fact, so is the fourth derivative. And every other derivative after that is also going to be zero, right? And this is going to happen for any power function or indeed for any polynomial function. Um, eventually, all the derivatives are going to be zero. On the other hand, if we look at this trig function, let's see what happens here. So we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. We know that the second derivative is, well, so that's going to be the derivative of the first derivative, so it's the derivative of cos. And we know that the derivative of cos is negative sine, right? The third derivative is the derivative of the second derivative. We can bring the minus sign out front, and then the derivative of sine is cosine, and finally, for that fourth derivative, we're going to do the derivative of minus cos x, and so that's going to be minus times the derivative of cos, which is minus sine, minus minus sine, gives you sine x, which is sort of an interesting thing. You, once you do four derivatives, you get back to where you started. Um, so you can probably guess if I asked you now for the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th derivative, what's there going to be? If I asked you for the 132nd derivative, um, you can figure out what that's going to be. In fact, as long as you know how to find the remainder when you're dividing by 4, you can now figure out the, any order derivative for the sine function. and It's always going to be one of these four possibilities. Um, our last one is even simpler because we know that the exponential function is its own derivative, and in fact, any multiple of the exponential function is its own derivative because of the constant multiple rule, right? f prime of x will be 5 times the derivative of e to the x, which is 5 times e to the x, so nothing happens. And if nothing happens when you take the first derivative, nothing's going to happen for the second, third, or fourth derivatives either. So this is also going to be f double prime, and it's going to be f triple prime, and it's going to be the fourth derivative, and the fifth, and the sixth, and so on, right? It's going to be the same result for each one. Okay. Um, you'll probably encounter a few of these as you work through the exercises. Um, it's relatively straightforward. Once you know how to take one derivative, higher order derivatives are straightforward. You just take your result, and you take the derivative again. You keep going um, for however many steps you're asked to do.